Hey, what's up? I, uh, I got that chicken water that I upgraded, I'll say a little bit earlier before the winter hit, and it's been working just fine, actually, exactly as it was, until things got really cold. Over the last week or so, uh, we've had temperatures, you guys have probably seen it across the whole country, but temperatures here uh, have been high, today was 20, and the lows are right around zero, less than 10 degrees basically every night. This morning when I got up, it was one degree Fahrenheit outside. So we're gonna see how it's doing right now at 20 degrees, but uh, I'm guessing it's probably still totally frozen. So I'm going to put together a winter waterer. The reason that I like the one that I have is because it's outside the coop, which makes it really easy for me to refill with the hose or uh, what I do here in the winter is, you know, gallon pitcher or whatever. Hey girls or a bucket that I can fill with at least room temperature water from inside. But what's happened is these nipples here in the pipe, they've just totally frozen. So I'll show you inside here what I've had. See, look, this just not enough. I'm getting ice on the top here. In fact, I had just a normal, it's kind of like a big puck. You'll see it here in a few minutes that was sitting on the bottom here, but it wasn't enough to keep the pipe from freezing. So I took this one. This is actually one that is intended to be wrapped around the pipe or run alongside the pipe, but I wanted to keep it inside here because I didn't want the chickens pecking at it and getting themselves zapped. So <laughs> I have this one, but again, it's not keeping this from freezing. When I tap those nipples, like with the stick or something, they're just frozen solid and the chickens can't drink. So I brought up that bowl with warm water and you know, by midday, totally frozen. So we're gonna come up with a better solution. For this new chicken water, uh, I still wanna go with a bucket. This is a two gallon bucket, going a little smaller so it's easier for me to carry in and out. Plus my chicken coop's not huge, so I wanted there still to be plenty of space in there. So I wanted something with a little bit smaller footprint. Plus I'm either gonna hang it or I'm gonna have to set it onto something so that the nipples are on the bottom but they're still easily accessible to the chickens at the right height, not like way down at ground levels. For those reasons, I decided to go with a two gallon bucket. Bucket, got a lid. This kind of lid does like seal on and then it has this like tear off strip. I will just start by tearing it off. Gonna need it to be torn off, <laughs> not a big deal. In fact, I could just tear it off now because I'm not worried about this bucket staying sealed. So just regular lid. So then I also need nipples. I have three chickens. I could get by with one or two nipples, but for today, I'm just gonna show you by putting the one nipple on. It screws in, but it's also got this backing on it here too. A little nut that I'm gonna use uh, to tighten it in there. Specifically, this is for putting it on a thin walled thing like a bucket, right? I have a drill with a eight and a half millimeter bit. This is a 5 16 which is just barely under that. And then a utility knife. Utility, anyway, for cutting a hole in the top of the bucket, or actually a little bit of a flap, so that I can run a power cable through, because I am gonna have to put a warmer in the bottom of this. Let's get going. We're gonna keep this simple. I do wanna drill a hole pretty dang close to the bottom of the bucket. That way, as much of the water as possible can be used. I'm also gonna go ahead and put it right here on the side where the handle is. Easy, hole drilled. Then we're just gonna take this and screw it in. They actually taper the threads here. It's a little bit tapered. That way it will seal as you put it in. Okay. I kind of just had to press it in. I'm just gonna go all the way in. Hopefully that's not too close to the bottom and the wing nuts don't just hit uh, barely. Okay, now that should seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with water. While that's going, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole in the lid. Actually, I'm not gonna cut right at the edge. I'm just gonna cut a little flap, just a little bit in from the edge. I'm gonna do it carefully so I don't slice myself again. Now I'm gonna go this way so that the flap opens toward the rim. The reason for that is the flap has a tendency where it hinges to wanna to keep cracking further and further up, but it's not gonna really crack against this edge that's a bit stronger. I just, I've scored it, but I need to go through it a couple of times. I just really need this to be big enough to fit the plug for the outlet through. Hopefully this is it. I think that's gonna work. Safely done with the utility knife. Okay, one thing I wanted to check is that I'm not leaking around this, and it's looking pretty good to me. We're almost done. Okay, next I've got my K&H, this heater. I've used it in the past, works great. This just sits down in the water on the very bottom, and it doesn't make the water warm, it just keeps it from freezing. But with this in there, I've never had even ice crystals show up on the top. Okay, it's time for the moment of truth on my hole. Does it fit? Yes. Barely, but yes. This is my chicken water. Full of water. Now, we gotta go get it out there. I think I'd really like to kind of hang it right there in that corner. 
You can see there's not a whole lot going on down there. It wouldn't get in the way of their perches. I could potentially do it here more in the middle where I already have sort of a support beam up there. I'm thinking hanging. All right, for this, I'm gonna go ahead and let them out just so they're out of my way. Here you go. Yeah, snow, huh? You wanna stay there? Okay, well, cause I'm coming in. Okay, got that connected. Now it's just a matter of running a power cord to it and we're good to go. And now we're done. Here's what I've got. Got the bucket hanging with the one nipple right down there near the bottom. It's at a really good height for them. I've got it height adjustable because that's a top line hitch. Hooked to this power cord. Go ahead and close it because they've all opted to stay inside. And then this actually fit coming out the back up top really well. And I've got it plugged in. The other thing I did to help with the winter was I put this tarp up on this one side. That's just to help block any wind so that it won't be quite as cold inside. So wind can't just blow straight through. I could do another wall like here on this backside, but with that fence there, we're not getting a strong cross breeze this direction. So that should be okay. My hope is that this watering system works all through the winter, even at these uh, zero degree Fahrenheit and even sub-zero temperatures that we're facing right now. I'll know by morning. So I'm gonna let you know here in just a minute. I mean, a minute for you, obviously I have to wait all night. And check that out. No freezing over at minus one at least. I'm gonna call that a victory. This thing's gonna work. No. Oh my, I cannot believe I just did that. What other things are you doing to help make sure that your animals stay safe and reasonably comfortable through these cold winter days? Let me know in the comments below and we'll see you next time.